Welcome to this activity on the programming language family tree. Now there are so many programming languages and each have their own specialist purposes. However, programming languages are related to one another and knowing one can make it easier to learn another. So in some cases languages are so similar that they can be substituted for one another entirely. In this activity we're going to look at how programming languages are related. We're going to draw a family tree that you can use to compare and contrast different languages, potentially even substituting one for another. And then in the next activity, we'll look at how popular different programming languages are and what the market is like for each. So the programming language family tree starts with C. C is a low-level, compiled, procedural language invented about 50 years ago. Okay, so what does that mean? We already know what low-level language is. It's a language which is harder for humans to read, but easier for computers to read, so faster. Now, when we say compiled, we mean that C programs are run directly by the computer as machine code. So this means that the code can be very fast, but it can also make for more complicated code. Uh, when we say that code C is procedural, we mean that C source code looks like the source code that we've seen so far. So that's lines of instructions or procedures that are fed into the computer and then run one at a time. Now, C is still used a lot today when we need to build programs that are very small or very fast. For instance, a tiny sensor on a noise-cancelling headphone might use C, or the cameras interpreting data in a self-driving car. But the big downside of C is that it takes years to master. So over the next decade, C was refined into C++. Now, C++ is still a low-level compiled procedural programming language, just like C, but it's easier to learn and how to write. Uh, C++ is still widely used today for high-speed games and audio programming. Now, C and C++ dominated programming for like 20 years, and during that time, companies began to develop their own programming languages. And most of these languages were inspired by, but much easier than, C++. So this takes us to the next epoch. In the mid-90s, Sun Microsystems released their version, and that's Java. So Java is the first high-level language in our family tree. And just like C and C++, Java is a compiled language. It's very fast, and it runs directly as machine code. However, Java is also a high-level language. So with Java, programmers don't have to worry about handling the computer memory directly. Now, this combination, being easy to use but still very fast, makes Java very popular. Java was so popular that Microsoft decided to release their own version, and that's C Sharp. So that's Java and C Sharp. They're the first high-level languages in our family tree. And both of these were designed for big corporate engineering firms. Now, C++ also inspired a smaller, easier-to-learn group of languages, and these are the scripting languages. And this includes Python, PHP, and Ruby. Now, scripting languages are high-level programming languages that are easier to learn and use than compiled languages. And the reason I've chopped them up this way is, if you know one scripting language, there's a good chance that you can pick up another one quite quickly, because they're quite similar to each other. And there's one more big scripting language to look at, and actually this is the biggest of them all, it's JavaScript. Now, JavaScript is sometimes confused for Java, and while Java did inspire a lot of JavaScript, they're actually not similar at all. And this is because Java is a compiled language, whereas JavaScript is a scripting language. So on the screen, we have the eight most popular programming languages used today. And in the next activity, we're going to compare their popularity. In a moment, we'll use this map to place some candidates. But first, let's add a handful of up-and-coming languages that you might see on job descriptions from forward-thinking companies. So the first three come out of the Java family. That's Scala, uh, that's Scala, Clojure, and Kotlin. So all three of these languages are based on Java, but with a twist. Remember how, at the beginning of this video, I explained that a procedural program is designed to run one instruction at a time. Well, procedural programs are not the only kind of program. There's another quite academic way to think of a program as a giant equation that is solved by a computer. Now this is quite advanced, and it's called functional programming. Scala, Clojure, and Kotlin are functional programming languages, so I've given them all this little fx in the corner there. Now, this is a whole different way of programming to procedural programming, and it requires specialist experience. Functional programming approaches are really popular these days, because you can write very fast code using them. But not every functional programmer wants to work in the Java ecosystem, the Java family. 
This has led to a boost in popularity of other functional languages, including Rust. And then the final language that we're going to add in is Go. Now, Go is not a functional language. Uh, it's an odd language. It's, it's compiled, but it's intended to be as easy to learn as a scripting language. That's why I put it in both black for compiled and white for scripted. I've included it here because now we've got two low-level languages, C and C++, the six most popular languages, and five kind of up-and-coming ones, all in this big web. Okay, let's use this map to do some matching. So let's imagine that I have a Python job here in orange, but my candidate only knows Ruby in green. So are they still a good match? Well, the chances are that yes, they are. Python and Ruby are pretty close together. There's only one line between them. They're both high-level scripting languages. They're both white boxes, and they were invented around a similar time. They're pretty close um, going up and down on the screen. Okay, let's go again. So this time I have a candidate with experience in Python, and they're applying for a job in Java. Okay, are they a good match? This is a little bit trickier, because on one hand, Python and Java aren't very close in the family tree. It's quite a lot of distance. Also, Python is a scripting language in white, and Java is a compiled language in black. And things aren't looking good for this candidate so far. However, what about if my candidate tells me that they know a little bit of C++ in the middle? Well, this is looking better, because C++ is a common ancestor of Python and Java. It kind of joins the two up. I'd definitely be happy putting forward a Python dev if they knew some C++ for a Java job. Okay, last one, and then it's over to you to try. So I have a Ruby candidate going for a closure job. Now, this is just clearly not going to work. They're completely opposite sides of the tree. Ruby is scripted, closure is compiled, and Ruby's like not a functional language at all. So I'd need to see some evidence that this candidate could write closure code before even thinking of putting them forward for the job. So that's the programming language family tree. Okay, now let's practice using it to match candidates to roles. Or you can take a look at the relative popularities of these pieces of tech and where the job markets are hottest. So that's the end of the first activity. I'll just now start the second activity. It's about relating the popularity of these things. Okay, so what's the relative popularity of these programming languages? Let's quickly add some data into this family tree. And we're going to start with the relative sizes of companies. Let's actually start with the biggest one first. That's JavaScript. So JavaScript is used in 226,000 code bases. This is uh, data directly from Stackshare. It's a huge website that uh, tracks all this sort of stuff. Uh, and it's re relevant up, right up to 2022. So this is right now. It's JavaScript uses about 220,000 different code bases. Then it's Python on 155,000. PHP on 115,000. Java down at 90,000 code bases. C Sharp is even uh, smaller than that. Ruby much smaller than that. And then I haven't even put on blobs for Go, Scala, Clojure, Kotlin, and Rust because they're just really not, not used a huge amount. So that's the number of companies that are using these things. Um, what about the number of people who are applying for these things versus the number of coders who uh, know this language. So this, I think, will give us quite some interesting information because for some of these languages, there are way more jobs than there are coders, and for some of them, there's many more coders than there are jobs. So JavaScript is one of those interesting cases. There are quite a lot of jobs for JavaScript. It's like the third highest, I think, on, on the list from Stackshare. But according to the Stack Overflow survey, about 70% of engineers work in JavaScript. So there's quite a lot of competition for these jobs out there. Okay, next up, let's look at Python. So Python has way more jobs on the market than JavaScript, like nearly 150% of it. Uh, and fewer devs use Python regularly. Now, this is probably largely driven by the growth in data and data analysis, um, which has really, really pushed Python um, as a language to know. But it's interesting that the balance is the other way around for a Java than for a JavaScript dev. Okay, let's move over to Java. As always, there are loads of jobs in Java, more than in JavaScript, slightly fewer than in Python at the moment. Um, but very few devs know Java compared to the number of jobs that are there. These are big engineering jobs in usually large corporate companies. Um, so that's why there is that disparity. All right, PHP. Things are not good for PHP in terms of the job market. Um, uh, if, if you are a candidate out there with PHP, you are in good company. A lot of developers, about a quarter of all developers, say that they know and, and write in PHP, but the number of jobs available in PHP is just not that high. And I'd suggest this is because PHP is quite a specialist application language. It's used for building websites, and that's 
pretty much most of what it will do. Okay, let's look at C Sharp. So C Sharp is uh, similar to Java in the sense that it's a kind of proprietary Microsoft ecosystem. Um, and a similar number of devs know it as no Java. There are many fewer jobs in it though, so that's interesting to note. Ruby, I thought, was very interesting indeed. Although as a market it's quite small, only sort of 6,000 jobs comparable almost to PHP, so few developers know it. Which means that if you know Ruby and you are in the market for a Ruby job, you have you stand a reasonably good chance. Probably pushes the salaries a bit higher as well. And then uh, going back in time, it's harder to get data for how much C and C++ are used because they're used on strange things like microchips and you know space satellites. But uh, what we can get data from is how many devs know them, and it's quite a decent chunk. A lot of devs know C++ and a lot of devs know C. Um, so this is still a very healthy and robust industry. C++ is especially used in games programming, audio design, uh, high uh, speed mathematical stuff. So quite a strong academic presence in C++ as well. And then uh, there's the new languages. Let's start with Go. 10% of devs say that they know Go. Scala, Clojure, and Kotlin um, are uh, pretty small, pretty niche languages. Kotlin is slightly bigger, probably because it's used uh, very heavily in the Android development ecosystem, mobile. Uh, and then Rust uh, sits on 8% uh, as well, gradually growing in popularity. So we can sort of say that Go, Kotlin, and Rust are looking like languages that we'd expect to grow in future and maybe take some of the market away from PHP and C Sharp. Thanks for watching.